Hey everyone, Jonas here, and uh, yeah, so today we are going to create a tutorial, and uh, what we're going to create is that we are going to set up the texturing and lighting for a, a bottle that I made, a, a sparkling water slash wine bottle. So I think this is going to be quite fun, and hopefully you get a lot out of it. And um, yeah, so let me just dive right into this tutorial. Uh, here you see that I have the scene uh, with uh, our bottle and the light setup and the backdrop. And I'm not going into too much detail in this video about how I modeled the bottle. It was quite simple. I just used a cylinder and uh, then I modeled after a reference image that I got from something called Saber Glass and you should try and look up the page uh, it's called Saber Glass and you can actually get a lot of reference images of bottles in there so um, go have fun with that and uh, but yeah I'm not going into too much detail about how I uh, <clears throat> modeled this this one so today it's it's all about the the uh, texturing and the uh, yeah, and the uh, lighting setup. So, to show you guys what we have here, um, yeah, let me just set up the the screen for you guys. So I'm going to the camera mode, and let me just turn off the viewport shading. So here you see our setup. Um, let me just turn off the things that don't make sense right now, the key and the backlight and the yeah. So right now we just have the scene right here. Um, let me just turn these things off so it's easier for you guys to see. So yeah, the way that I made this label was that I actually just duplicated the bottle and then just cut off the uh, things that I didn't want to have as a label. So so we just have this kind of <laughs> uh, extra bottle just made into a label. And uh, yeah, so let's set it up. So the third, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some thickness to this label because right now it's like infinity small, so it's not very realistic. So I made a, just a simple solidify a modifier here and just added a bit of uh, thickness, minus uh, 1.1, uh, minus 0 0.01 meter. Um, and then just to you know, make the um, round uh, edges a, a bit more sharp. I added a bevel, and this just created a more realistic type of like paper label. Um, and then I just uh, put it as subdivision surface modifier uh, to to clean things up. So yeah, so now we have uh, our our white label right here, and um, so let's start uh, shading this one. So I will just create another scene here and I'm going into the shader editor. And what you see here is that we have this simple node setup and this is just for the label, just something that makes it a bit more realistic, I think. Uh, it's a small thing you can do, but it has a huge impact on the final render. Um, yeah, so what I did was that I actually went into the uh, edit mode here and uh, just so you can see here I selected it, it all and I um, just uh, reset it and I marked the um, edges with the with a mark seam and yeah I'll, let me just show you how that is done so um, what you can do is that you can take all of the, the edges here, just if you select these edges and then you enter U on your keyboard and you can just mark the seam right here and this will just help when you unwrap um, with making this uh, easier for the unwrapping and you will see later why. Um, also I have a highly uh, subdivide label uh, because it's going to help a lot uh, with the realistic embodying of the label text later on. But yeah, so what I did was that I UV unwrapped this 
um, I went into the material of the label and I, under the base color, I, I added an image texture, um, and I used, uh, this, this one you see here, and, uh, I just plugged the color into the base color of our, um, of our principal shader. Uh, let me just see here and use the layer. And then I went into the, uh, UV editing and you can see here that we have our our mesh here and if I select all of all of this um, all of the label and hit you and then unwrap we should start to see our uh, unwrapped UV here uh, projected onto the label so I'll just rotate this one 90 degrees and then I'm going to move it in towards the middle uh, and it, it doesn't have to be perfect because nothing in real life is anyway so to make realistic rendering you need to add a bit of human touch to it uh, but just do it as as good as you can and then I'm going to scale it up so that it fits better overall yeah I think this is fine and now you can see that if we go back into the layout mode we have the label unwrapped on our bottle so yeah so this is the first step just under the principal bsdf um i added a uh, image texture and it popped up as this one uh, over here in our uh, shading viewport and um, yeah let's start adding uh, even more depth and detail to this label because as you can see right now it's it's actually quite um uh, yeah, just flat and and smooth, and I just like there's a bit more if there's a bit more detail towards it. So what I actually did was for the roughness, I went to the Ambient CG website and downloaded a roughness of the of a paper, uh, yeah, just a, like a, a paper a CG, um, and then I just took this one and you can see here if I go into close into the bottle here you can see when i plug in the color to the roughness it adds this kind of glossy and also like roughy kind of uh, paper in texture to the um, label i just think it's a bit uh, more realistic and nice to have but i actually wanted also um, to have even more a uh, kind of depth into the image so what i did was that i created a normal map and um, i did this in photoshop and you can search for this or you can write me and i will help you set up a normal map in photoshop but i actually took the png of this label and then there's uh, ways in photoshop and also illustrator where you can turn it into a height map or a normal map or any kind of like map that you want um and without going into too much detail about the normal map, what um, what you need to understand is that the normal map, uh, the and in my case when I use it as a displace, uh, displacement map, um, it's going to project a lot more depth uh, um, into the label, making the, uh, the letters stand out. And uh, this, <laughs> so instead of doing it with like a, uh, like a mesh and and you know uh, modeling it which would just be crazy and uh, really slow um you can sort of like trick the uh, the view of it so that it looks like that it is in, embedded for example and this is and that is what we are going to do with this one so i just had the um the image texture again and uh, just had uh, like a like the, the normal map and then uh, for the displacement I added this into the displacement output in our shading viewport and if I and the way it, you can see what it does is if I turn this one off with the, so we just have this paper um, and put in the um, displacement you can see how it is embodied uh, into the label and this is just a really cool effect you can already see it's it looks really nice and 
quite real, 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 like realistic and it's sort of like have I done this like modeling it would have taken me forever I don't even think I, I can do that so yeah it's just really nice and when I add in the back the the label it will just be embodied into this label right here so yeah this is just a really nice effect but you can see that if we zoom in, maybe it's not good here on YouTube, but there's a lot of like small artifacts and it's just a bit too clean still, I think. So what I did was I just created a noise texture, um, set the scale to 30, the detail to 15,000 and roughness to 1, um, into a bump with the strength of uh, 0.1. And this I just put into the normal... Um, and this just created a bit noise into the label, just making it again more realistic and just smoothing out any like artifacts the, the normal map would create. Because, um, yeah, that's often with normal maps and yeah, displacement maps, you need really high detailed ones uh, to create a good image. Uh, I don't know how good mine was, so yeah. But this works f for me and this project, I think. So yeah, so this this is just a simple setup of this shading. And um, yeah, I also did like just a noise texture with a very small bump for the glass. I just I just like the glass also to have a bit of, of noise in it. And yeah, so so the so the label is basically done right now. So um let's just take a look at the light setup. And this is going to be uh, quite a short uh, tutorial, I think. Um, but yeah, I just think that it, it it was nice to show you how I create these realistic labels. And this is just a, a PNG, a label that I found uh, online um, free. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was fun, like a sparkling drinking water in a, in a wine bottle. So, um, but yeah, if I go into the viewport shading now, um, we can see this kind of darkish uh, scene. So this is where the, the button really comes to life. Um, right now, I just have an HDRI and something that I found on HDRI Haven. And you can just Google yourself and find any HDRI that you think is, is fun. You can see up here in the, in the top of the... Um, of the uh, of the glass, um, you can see that there is like sort of a, a window above. Um, so this is what the HDRI are creating, just a, a, a lot more realistic lighting and reflections in the uh, in the glass. Um, and you can see here in our uh, texture how it is already kind of embodied. I don't think you can see it quite this. Uh, Maybe not here on YouTube, but but I promise you that there is the depth in the uh, letters um, and also the drawings down here um, because of the uh, displacement map that we created. Uh, and here you can actually also see what the uh, pavement section looks like. Just fun. But yeah, so this is the setup. I just have the, the camera slightly angled up and uh, the camera setting is a kind of a close-up uh, kind of telephoto lens, macro lens, uh, uh, 120, just really highlighting the product that we have here. And they also have a depth of field um, just for the, the corners here. Uh, yeah, it might not show much. I might set it down. Um, but yeah, this is not, yeah, you can play around with the, with the depth of field as you, as you want for your product. Um, yeah, but... Um, so, yeah, well, our lighting setup, how is that? So we have the huge backdrop here, and I just thought that with this project, it would be nice to have sort of like caustics, um, because this is something that water or glass creates, but we don't have anything that it could reflect onto here. I could have it done on the backdrop, but yeah. I just thought, uh, how about another way to do this? So I actually just had a light. Uh, I found one from the GoBo's light textures that I bought um, in the blender market. And there's a lot of like really cool lights in, in that uh, bundle. So um, you can see what uh, 
now that I have like enabled this one, I just cast it straight onto the backdrop. And you can see that this it creates these really nice uh, really, um, yeah, caustics and, and yeah, also to the bar, bottle, it just looks really, really good. And um, then I had sort of like a backlight just here out on the right side of the bottle on the like like sort of a rim rimish backlight um something that i just it's as i have told again and again in the tutorials a uh, high contrast and a uh, backlighting and top lighting is just uh, way more cinematic and um then i had a, a larger fill light uh for the left side just highlighting the the lights that we also have down here or to the like motivated uh, motivated uh, light uh, onto the bottle and then i added just a key light just to really pump up just a bit overblown but this is just more realistic um so yeah and uh you can see down here that uh, i used the filmic and the high contrast and i actually took down the exposure a bit to keep the contrast and you can see when I turn on the false color, as I always do, we have a blown out scene, uh, several places, not too much blown out, but 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 still a bit. But uh, it works for this setup, I think. Um, anyway, I will always go into Photoshop and Lightroom and and add more contrast and and put in a bit of grain also. And yeah, this is also something I want to do a tutorial on uh, how you can really spark up your renders afterwards because uh, a lot of times renders come out quite flat in blender uh, even though you add high contrast it's still like it just miss um, um yeah a bit of contrast and colors and yeah so you, you really do need to to uh, to do a bit of uh, post processing on your images but uh, this will be for another uh, yeah tutorial so yeah, um, this is the final render right here. And uh, yeah, I um, let me just close this one down. You can see here we have the, let me just have a load. And here we have the final render. And uh, I hope you found something useful in the tutorial. And uh, yeah. Uh, looking forward to showing you more inside of Blender, also with simulations and yeah, product, product renderings. And yeah, I just want to create a lot of t tutorials that kind of highlight how Blender can be used professionally and uh, create uh, professional results, uh, realistic results also. So yeah, um, this was all for now and uh, see you again uh, soon. So bye.